First, I just want to thank God for getting up this morning. So we thank you, Lord, for being an awesome God, waking us up this morning, yes. giving us our right mind. Everybody got their limbs, so that's yes. a blessing beyond a blessing. Yes. And I want to say um, an appreciation on last week for our first anniversary for when the chapter is closed. We moved into a second chapter and saw the earth. Thank everybody for participating and helping with job well done. Amen. Want to give Narissa Crockett, uh, to the Narissa Crockett, a thanks because she did a phenomenal job on last week putting everything together. And the sister just got gifts. So I thank God that her, she's not here this morning. So we just lift up in prayer and give God glory for her. Um, <clears throat> and my word today is not the title, but it's a word God gave me the beginning of the year for me. And it's expectations. I expect everything from Christ and nothing from me. Um, the title is Don't Trust Your Feelings. Amen. And the answer to that is Let's renew our mind. Amen. That's the word of God. He said, daily we should renew our minds with the word of Christ. Amen. Think expectations for man has failed us. Amen. Some expectations come from the teaching that we got as a child. He said we were born into a sinful world and shaped into iniquity. So we have to ask ourselves, who did our shape? Amen. So then once the word comes inside of us, that starts shaping us into the truth. And he said, the truth is what sets us free. Amen. Are we any, are any of us without fault blames? No, we're not. We're not exempt from anything. We all go through things in life. But at the same time, the Christ that lives in us is bigger than what we are. Amen. I just thank God for him being Amen. king of kings and Lord of Lord, knowing all things. He's not shocked about what we go through. He's not disappointed in us because he said, I know every step that you'll take, every hair that's on your head. I knew you before I formed you in your mama's wounds. I think the part that we fail ourselves is we get, we get disappointed in ourselves. We get disappointed in people. We start expecting stuff from man. Man is just what we say he is, man. <laughs> and when you start expecting from someone, you get disappointed because sometimes, you know, we want people to be like us. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It, it would just behooves me to try to sing. Hey, I can't sing, y'all. Mm -hmm. So why would I even want to get up? And, well, I would say, why? Because he said, make a joyful noise. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the guys over this morning. I mean, they was into it, head popping. You'll be surprised how God used the simplicity of life. And we think that we were expecting ourselves to be like somebody else. Mm -hmm. When I left here the last time, I got, after I got up and spoke, mm -hmm. you question yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask yourself, okay, what did I say wrong? What did I do? He said, don't box me in. Amen. I think when we box them in, it's because we start expecting ourselves to move and act like another believer. Mm -hmm. We want to say, you know, they know Christ. They move in this way. They can pray. They can play the drum. They can do this. No, you're created after his image and likeness. You're unique in your own self. Don't get in anybody else's lane. Do what he called you to do. Right. Perfect what he called you to do. And that is to know him. And that's why he said, renew your mind daily. And I'm going to give you word. Because the word is what we renew our mind. Ephesians 4, 17 and 24. This I say, therefore, I testify in the Lord that you no longer walk as the Gentiles also walk. So we got to know that we all called Gentiles at one point and God granted us into the um, Jewish family. So we're no longer Gentiles. We're sons and daughters of the most high God. And so praise God that he saw fit because he said my own didn't accept me. So he chose us as a chosen people as well. So thank God for that. And he says, in the vanity of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, alienated from 
the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the heart of their heart, who being past feelings gave themselves up to work all the uncleanness with greediness, but ye do not so learn Christ. If, if so, be that ye heard him, and we're talking him, even as truth in Jesus Christ, that ye put on always as concerning your former manner of life, the old man that wax corrupt after the lust of the deceit, and that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that simply says that don't trust yourself. <laughs> don't trust what you think. Don't trust what you believe. Trust what the word of God say. Because that's what comes to set us free is the word, which is the truth. So <clears throat> putting on the whole arm of God, I, I just thought about that this morning when I got up. I said, he said, first, put on the whole arm of God. The whole arm of God is Christ himself. Amen. You first, you save in your right mind. Salvation is Christ. These are put on the breastplate of righteousness, being right standing with Christ. We owe, he said, owe no man nothing. You owe no man nothing. And I think sometimes we take upon ourselves because you did something for me, I owe you something. I owe, owe no man nothing. Christ has already done it. It's finished. It's, it's, it's nothing else he's going to do. He's already done everything that he's going to do other than when he come back and the rapture take place. Praise God. And then he said, put on the belt of truth. Be truth with yourself. A lot of times we live a false life. And I yesterday just pondered in my mind of the of pandemic with the mass. And I say, God, you know, we've been in this thing for almost three years and we still wear masks. Not necessarily this mask, but we still hide behind stuff that you don't have to hide behind. Once you speak the truth about a situation, it's over with. Yes, I have done some stuff. Yes, I'm doing some stuff. What you gonna do with it? There's nothing you can do with it, but God has already taken care of it. He's died on the cross for everything. That's the part we have to always say that's it. we serve an awesome God. He didn't pick one person. He didn't just pick Pastor KK, Minister Linda, Brian, other the band. He didn't pick one person. He said, I died for everybody. Everybody. So no matter where you are in your life, he can, he can pick you up. He's died for you. You can't do anything but fall in love with Christ. And when you fall in love with Christ, then you start seeing people different. At one point, my eyes was fixed on what I saw in the natural. Mm -hmm. But I told Christ when I came to Salt of Earth, let me see everybody the way you see them. And that, I don't want to know anything about anybody. I don't want to be able to love everybody here from right here. Amen. I don't want to know what you did in your past. I don't want to know what you're doing right now. Amen. Because the God I serve love all of us yeah. right now. Amen. And I think that's some of our issues. We, we want to Including me, you, ourselves. We beat ourselves up on our heads. What can you do with your hands? Nothing. So why do I seek to know Terrence Page? If I come in contact with her, she show me love. That's all I got for you, baby. Yes, it is love. Amen. That's all, all I need for you is his love. When I come in contact with her, I don't need to know their heads. I need to know who they are to me. And that's the Christ in each one of them. So I thank God for the love of Christ. Yes. The love that surpasses all understanding. Yes. I mean, the love that surpasses all understanding. If you did for something, you're going to give it. Yes. If you're looking for something, you're going to find it. Yes. And sometimes you'll find it in this illusion. Mm -hmm. It ain't even real. And if I, I seek to know something about that side, it simply says stop. It's red and white. If I keep digging, I'm going to find something that's really not real about that side. Amen. But in my mind, I believe that I know what I know. But that's not what Christ said. Amen. It said stop and go no further. Yes. So seek him and don't see nothing else. Amen. I seek the Christ in each person yes. because I know there's a part of each one of you that I 
Yes. So why would I seek anything outside of Christ? Mm. I'm not looking for Linda because Linda is a wonderful teacher and you are a great teacher. Praise God. We need the teachers. I don't need the Christ in Linda. Amen. And so with me seeking the Christ in Linda, I wait for something that she can give me. There's a nugget inside Linda that sparks me to say, hallelujah, God. Amen. That's the highest praise. Amen. I seek something from somebody because he said we are body of Christ. And we all need each other. Amen. And don't believe you don't need anybody. You do. Amen. If you didn't need anybody, you would never gave your family. Mm -hmm. If you didn't need, need anybody, you would never gave somebody of Christ. Yes. We are a one man show. Yes. People of Christ is not a one man show. Mm -hmm. I know, Pastor. Christ is not a one man show. Mm -hmm. It's God, it's the Son Jesus, and it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. They do. Amen. And one. Mm -hmm. So if it's three of them in one, he didn't make us separate. Mm -hmm. There's a Christ in us that's big. Yes, mm -hmm. he is. But there's something inside somebody that you need. Mm -hmm. He said they overcome by your testimony. So I yes, Jesus Christ is the testimony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need a pastor, y'all. When, mm -hmm. when I'm talking, I hear pastor speaking to my head. So I have to go by what I hear. So when I hear what I hear, I speak to you. So, yes, Christ is the testimony, but Christ has to have a legal a vessel. He's not an illegal God. He's a legal God. So in order for him to be a legal God, he has to have a body. So being a body, you are a testimony. <laughs> so with you being a body, you are a testimony to somebody else. Because sometimes people get truly low in their life and they need encouragement. Yes. And when you need encouragement, you're going to need somebody to speak a word to you. And sometimes it only takes one word. It's just like Peter being on the boat and God told him, come okay. on the water. He said, come. Uh -huh. Then he was in the sea. He said, peace be still. Okay. So it don't take a whole lot. So if we're trying to obtain everything, sometimes we miss that one word. Just, just be still. Just stop.
out of the same example of disobedience for the word of God is living and 